Hi, today we talk about LLMs outfitted with video understanding. The way we train video LLMs right now is frankly setting them up to fail. We feed them every single frame in full detail as if expecting someone to recall every frame of a film reel. It's painfully slow, widely inefficient and overwhelms the model with redundant information. That's the core challenge with today's video language models. They treat video as a long sequence of image frames, even though frames contain similar information and produce almost identical video tokens. The result? Redundancy everywhere in the LLM's input. Positional encodings are forced to carry the burden of temporal reasoning and the model struggles to tell what happened when or even in what order. But what if we could compress the video without losing the plot? That's exactly what this new paper proposes with a new video LLM called STORM. It slashes the number of video tokens passed to the LLM but in a way that actually improves reasoning. Instead of drowning in details, STORM distills the sequence and understands it better. In this AI coffee break we'll unpack how STORM works and how it manages to outperform all existing open source video LLMs and even GPT-40 on long video benchmarks while being up to 8 times more efficient and nearly 3 times faster than previous state-of-the-art open models. So what's the big idea behind STORM? Most video language models treat each frame in a video as if it were completely new. They run a vision transformer on every frame which turns every single frame into hundreds of image vectors. All these image vectors are then appended to text tokens and then passed to a large language model, which is trained to predict the next words in a video description based on all the previous text and visual inputs. But here's the problem. Even for short clips, this creates an enormous sequence of tokens and as the video gets longer, the sequence length explodes, quickly overwhelming the model's capacity. First, we'll give the intuition and afterwards we'll go into the details. The idea is that in most videos, frames change only slightly from one to the next. So why treat each one as entirely new? Instead of processing every frame in full detail, Storm does the following. After the vision transformer, before anything reaches the language model, all image tokens pass through Mamba layers, a recent sequence model built for efficient long context processing, and these layers scan the entire video sequence, blending information from past and future frames into each token. The result? Every token now carries contextualized knowledge from the whole video, not just from its own frame. Once the tokens are enriched with this global context, STORM compresses. It averages groups of image tokens into a single representation. That way, the LLM receives only the distilled essence of what's happening with far fewer tokens and far less noise. At inference time, it goes even further. It skips the vectors from every second frame, no retraining required. In the end, the language model processes way fewer tokens, cutting out the clutter and focusing on the story. Now, let's look under the hood. How is Storm actually built? Storm combines three powerful components. First, it uses Siglib, a vision transformer that turns each video frame into a set of image tokens, 256 per frame to be precise. Then it reduces dimensionality of each vector with the same linear layer. I'm now too lazy to draw it out for every vector. You get the idea to reduce the dimensionality of each vector with a learned linear projection. Then come the Mamba layers to process these reduced vectors. The Mamba layers sit between the vision transformer and the language model. And unlike typical transformers, Mamba is a state space model, an architecture designed for long sequences and efficiently fuses information across the sequence, one token at a time, much like a linear RNN. We've made a video about Mamba, so watch it to find out how it works in detail. The new thing here for the Mamba layers is that they are bi-directional. They scan once forward and once backward through the video, enriching every token with context from the entire video, left and right. Think of it as giving each frame a memory of what happened before and what's coming next. Once that temporal context is baked into the token, Storm does temporal downsampling. It averages every four vectors corresponding to the same patch at 
four different frames together. Here in the visualization, I assume it is just two vectors the authors average over, but for Storm it's four, which reduces the sequence length going into the LLM by a factor four. And at inference time, it goes even further by only keeping every second frame that came out from the Mamba layers. So with this, we have a total sequence length reduction of a factor eight. There's also an option to compress along the spatial dimension. This involves averaging across image vectors coming from the same frame, but different patch. So instead of sending 256 tokens per frame to the LLM, Storm could send just 64 if one averages over four patches. However, in most of their experiments, the authors focus on temporal compression and skip spatial downsampling, likely to preserve finer grained visual detail. All of the remaining video vectors after downsampling get sent to the Quen2 VL language model, which has been pre-trained on text data and image caption data. Now, how do you train a model like this? The vision transformer encoder SIGLIP is already trained and can produce nice representations for any image input. Quen2VL is also pre-trained on image caption data and can say something about images. Only the Mamba layers are initialized from scratch and now have to undergo an alignment training stage. On image text data, the vision transformer and the LLM are frozen and only the Mamba layers train to make sure the visual tokens make sense to the LLM. Then comes the real deal, supervised fine tuning of all the components on a 12.5 million sample data set that includes text only data, image text pairs and crucially video text pairs from diverse data sets. For longer video, they fine tune further on 128 frame clips. In short, Storm is built from pre-trained modules and further fine-tuned to handle long videos efficiently and accurately. Alright, so how well does Storm perform? Let's start with MVBench, a benchmark designed to test temporal reasoning over short videos just 16 seconds long. It includes multiple choice questions about actions, object interactions and scene transitions. Storm beats Quen2 VL and even outperforms GPT-4 Omni. But Storm really shines on long video understanding, on MLVU, a benchmark that includes videos up to two hours long with both open-ended and multiple choice questions. Storm again outperformed GPT-4 Omni and open source models. And Storm did this while being drastically more efficient than its variant without any compression, namely a baseline model like Storm but with no Mamba, no token averaging and no sampling scored 69.5 on MVBench and 70.2 on MLVU, but Storm using 8 times less video tokens got even slightly better results while using 8 times less compute for the LLM. Because less compute is needed to run the LLM component, it also means that the user needs to wait 3.4 times less during inference time for the model response. The inference speedup was not as drastic as the compute for the LLM, because the VIT and the Mamba layers still need the time to process the data. So it's not just about accuracy, Storm makes video understanding scalable, it handles longer sequences without overwhelming the language model and performs better by not feeding it every redundant detail. And this matters because video data is everywhere, not just a few seconds, but minutes or hours at a time. And as video LLMs keep evolving, techniques like this could eventually unlock real-time assistants that understand live streams, summarize lectures, help with video editing, or even power smart robotics that interpret long sequences of actions. Anyway, it's getting late. Thanks for watching and if you like this video, subscribe for more AI research breakdowns and check out our merch. Thanks for watching and see you next time for another AI coffee break. Okay, bye.